Hello friends, welcome to medical video lecture series by All On Law team. Today I'm going to talk about keratoconus. We will start with the basics and try to understand what is the recent advances in the management of keratoconus. I hope you like this presentation. Uh, this presentation is going to be quite an update on keratoconus. Keratoconus is known to humanity for more than 150 years. What is keratoconus? Kerato means cornea, conus is cone shaped. So basically cornea becomes cone shaped in keratoconus. It is a bilateral condition. It is non-infective and non-inflammatory condition. There is thinning of the central cornea leading to the steepening of the cornea causing irregular astigmatism and blurring of vision. The usual age group that is affected in keratoconus is from 10 to 40 years of age. Most commonly it presents at around teenage or puberty and tends to stabilize as the patient grows older by 25 to 30 years probably the keratoconus becomes stable and chances of it going worse keep decreasing the prevalence of keratoconus is quite variable in different countries some countries have got a very high prevalence of keratoconus for example Asians have high prevalence of keratoconus compared to whites it tends to run in families the exact etiology of keratoconus is not well known there is a definite genetic component in keratoconus. It is autosomal dominant and it tends to run in families. So what are the clinical features or presentation of keratoconus? It is common to miss the diagnosis of keratoconus in initial stages. The patients may present with frequent change in their prescription of glasses. They get glasses, they are fine for a few months and then feel their vision is not very good with the glasses and the optician notices the prescription has changed. So that's one of the clue for the keratoconus. Apart from that, blurring of vision or patients who are already using contact lenses f for their vision may notice they are not able to tolerate the contact lenses. A another presentation is a sudden loss of vision with pain that is acute high drops. We'll discuss about it later on. Keratoconus can sometimes be associated with syndromes like connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, down syndrome, some of the ophthalmic syndromes like retinitis pigmentosa, Leber's congenital amaurosis can be associated with keratoconus. There is a lot of debate about association of atopy and keratoconus. The main pathology in keratoconus is thinning of the stromal layer of the cornea, which is the middle layer and it is found that there is decrease in number of the keratocytes and there is fragmentation of the Bowman's layer. The endothelial and desmet layers are affected in the later stages of the keratoconus. There is a very strong genetic association with variable inheritance. Various genes have been implicated like collagen genes, ZEB1 gene, SOG1 gene, etc. The eye rubbing in people who have got atopy is shown to induce interleukin 1s and FAS ligands which induce apoptosis of keratocytes leading to keratoconus. This is again a debatable topic. In the initial stages of keratoconus we may notice irregular astigmatism 
on retinoscopy you may notice their reflexes may become irregular and uh, this is what we call it as a scissoring reflexes direct fundoscopy shows oil drop sign placido disc may show irregular circles just below the central area as the catacornus advances we may be able to see a few signs on slit lamp examination like because of the protrusion of the apical part of the cornea when the patient looks down there will be bulging of the lower lid from this cone which is called as Munson sign corneal reflection of nasal cornea when the light is shown from the temporal side can be present which is called as Rizzotti's sign on slit lamp examination we can see iron deposits in the epithelial layer of the cornea around the central corneal area which is called as Fleischer's ring vertical folds in decimus layer that disappear on applying pressure on the eye are called as Oak's stri. Obviously in later stages of keratoconus we can see apical thinning and scarring. Acute hydrops is an emergency in keratoconus. Due to the rupture of the decimus layer the aqueous from the anterior chamber enters into the corneal stroma leading to painful sudden loss of vision. So a known keratoconus patient presenting with a sudden painful loss of vision the first differential diagnosis should be acute high drops. What are the investigating options we have? Mainly the corneal topography or corneal tomography is very useful in monitoring the progress of the keratoconus and it also helps in management of keratoconus. Anterior segment OCT is again an option to assess the severity of the keratoconus. So what is the management of keratoconus? The first line of management is glasses. To start off with, if the patient is able to tolerate glasses, that's the best thing. Advise on avoiding rubbing eyes and if patient has got allergic conjunctivitis, that should be treated to prevent the patient from rubbing. It has been shown that rubbing of the eyes causes worsening of the keratoconus. If the patient is not happy with the quality of the vision with the glasses, the second option is contact lenses. Start off with a soft contact lenses which have better tolerability. If the patient is not happy with the soft contact lenses, next option is the toric contact lenses which are basically contact lenses with correction for astigmatism. If the quality of vision is not good with the soft contact lenses, the next option is rigid gas permeable contact lenses that is RGP lenses. Managing atopy and avoiding eye rubbing is very important part of the management of keratoconus. In the last one to two decades, there are a lot of improvement in the management of keratoconus. One of the options to prevent progression of keratoconus is collagen cross-linking. The collagen cross-linking is done with riboflavin drops and then exposing the cornea to the ultraviolet light. This is shown to strengthen the cornea and it makes the cornea rigid thus decreasing the progressive thinning of the cornea. This will also help in improving the tolerability for the contact lenses. Apart from collagen cross-linking we do have an option of intracorneal stromal rings which are called as intacts. These are put in the mid peripheral part of the cornea in the stroma and they help to flatten the cornea and may help to improve the quality of vision. The surgical options that we have are deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty that is DALK. 
in which the superficial layers of the corneal stroma are removed as the pathology in keratoconus is mainly in the anterior layers in the early stages. The advantage of the DALK is there are less chances of rejection and graft failure because the endothelial layer of the cornea is left intact. If there is a scarring of the cornea involving the dust mat and the deeper layers, then the option is penetrating keratoplasty PKP. It has got a very high success rate and is one of the commonest indication for penetrating keratoplasty. The success rate of corneal grafts in keratoconus patients is 90 to 95% even after 20 years. So do all the patients need corneal grafts? No. Two third of the patients do manage fine with the contact lenses and about one third of the patient may need surgical procedure like corneal grafts in lifetime. Genetic screening is not a vi viable option at this stage. However, the screening of family members is quite useful in picking up keratoconus early and something can be done to prevent the progression. As we discussed about acute high drops which presents with an acute painful loss of vision, the management involves uh, prescription of sodium chloride that is hypertonic 5% high drops to be used which will help to decrease the corneal edema. Steroid drops like dexamethasone or prednisolone do help to control the inflammation and reduce the scarring. Cycloplegics like cyclopentolate help with pain relief. If the intraocular pressure is high, intraocular pressure lowering agents can be given. Ultimately, once the acute high drop settles and the cornea is healed by forming a scar, penetrating keratoplasty becomes an indication. So what is new in the management of keratoconus in recent years? One is in the prevention of progression of keratoconus by collagen cross-linking. Second thing is improvement in the quality of the vision by intracorneal segments, intacts, corneal refractive procedures that is a laser surgeries for improving vision, fake intraocular lens where the intraocular lens is put either behind the iris or in front of the iris. Dark that is deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty is a surgical option which has an advantage over full thickness penetrating keratoplasty as we discussed before. So the take home message is to suspect keratoconus in a teenage or young adult presenting with frequent change in glasses. I hope you liked the presentation. Please do share, like and comment on the presentation. Once again, thanks a lot from AONL team for listening to the presentation.